my journey to Nanette was not an easy one because all families are made differently. And so I'm a single dad by choice, which means that I don't have the necessary parts to create a baby. And so Nanette had to only, could only come to this world through the generous gift of a gestational surrogate and an egg donor who um, believed in me and believed in that families are all created differently. Through this process of gestational surrogacy and egg donation, people seem to think that um, you just spend all this money and then you just pay all these people to have a baby. But when reality, like, this isn't possible. Money can't buy this sort of happiness. This process requires you to have very good understanding of each other between you and your surrogate. You need to have a clear legal agreement that is in place to manage expectations and what is reimbursable, what's not. This is a great step that the government is making to update some of the regulations. It's kind of outdated. I believe that everyone deserves that chance to be a parent and the way that they're now updating this regulation, it will simply be much more transparent and clear with what is reimbursable or what's not and and make it more accessible for people like myself who want to achieve a family and of course also um, women who want to come forward and think you know I want to do this out of the goodness of my heart and what is um, what are the guidelines for that we just heard from someone who has first-hand experience about the surrogacy process for more about the assisted human reproduction act and the possible changes I'm joined by dr. Ubaku Abagu assistant professor in the faculties of law and pharmacy and pharmaceutical studies at the University of Alberta. Ubaka, as I understand it, Canada's current Assisted Human Reproduction Act was put in place in 2004. The government is now looking for feedback to clarify it. Was the initial act not serving its intended purpose? Uh, so what's actually happening is the act uh, gave uh, some power to the minister to develop regulations, so that's Health Canada, to develop regulations for aspects of the act. And so what we're seeing now are regulations that have been made uh, to clarify some aspects of the, of the statute. And these regulations relate specifically to three things. The safety of sperm and ova that is used for assisted reproductive uh, uh, services, uh, reimbursement of surrogates and egg donors, so the rules to clarify what kinds of uh, reimbursements they can receive because the act makes it a crime for surrogates and egg donors to be paid but allows reimbursement. So these are, there are rules to clarify reimbursement and also regulations to deal with administration and enforcement of the uh, act. So you mentioned it's illegal to pay for someone to carry a baby. So yes. what can you and can't you contract out when it comes to surrogacy? Right, you, you can't technically contract out anything. <laughs> what you can do is enter into an arrangement with a surrogate uh, and you can't pay for it. So it's not really a contract. So what it is that is that a, this is something that's been done uh, uh, gratuitously, if you will, for, by, the, by the surrogate. Uh, what you, can, you can provide reimbursements to the surrogate for expenses that they incur uh, for surrogacy, but you can't actually pay them. So the idea of a surrogacy contract, uh, technically speaking, uh, is illegal in Canada. What you can do is enter into a surrogacy arrangement whereby you have a surrogate uh, basically do it uh, for free and uh, you then reimburse them for expenses. So what sorts of gaps exist in the current legislation? What, what are the gray areas that can come oh, into play Oh, there's here? a ton of them. Uh, this has not been a, a very good piece of legislation in my opinion. Uh, but in, with respect to the issue of uh, reimbursements of surrogates and egg donors, uh, the, the first issue is that if you don't allow for payment, uh, there's a, a number of uh, uh, consequences that derive from that. And what we're seeing is the development of a gray market uh, in Canada whereby persons who want to procure surrogacy services will just go to the United States uh, to get those services because of the issues around paying a surrogate in Canada. It makes it much more difficult uh, to have those services provided in Canada. But even with respect to the rules around reimbursement, there's a lot of issues. Uh, I brought a list of those issues uh, with me to the studio today, uh, things that I think that Health Canada needs to address. Now, the good news is that the regulations uh, have been put out but there's a process of public consultation that's ongoing. Uh, so Canadians can still write into Health Canada and try and address some of these gaps. Uh, and as I said before, I have a list of issues with the reimbursement regulations that I can talk about. Mm -hmm. I want to get to that in a second. You mentioned it's quite different from the situation south of the border. So mm -hmm. how does Canada's laws compare with what's legal in the United States? Well, our laws are very restrictive. Uh, the Assisted Human Reproduction Act is a piece of criminal legislation. 
So it, it bans things. And if you uh, contravene the act, there's serious consequences. You could go to jail for a long period of time or be made to pay a fine, a very massive fine, or both. And so uh, that's very different from the approach they've taken in the U.S., uh, where they've pretty much let the market decide how this is going to be, this is going to work out. Um, surrogacy services in the U.S., for example, payment for surrogacy is not banned in many states in the U.S., uh, and you can get surrogacy services in the U.S. by paying a fee for it. The same thing with egg donation, uh, over donation in the U.S. It's also not banned uh, to pay someone for eggs in the U.S. Now, there are issues around all of this, don't get me wrong. Uh, there's all kinds of issues around exploitation, uh, issues that can be dealt with uh, in, a in a regulated, monitored system. I don't think we need a ban to necessarily get there. And I think what the approach they're taking in the U.S. is to say, let's try and regulate the harms that could arise from this instead of banning the activity entirely. Mm -hmm. And as you mentioned, this initial act came into play in 2004. Is this an issue becoming more complex because of science and technology developments, or is it social considerations that are coming into play here? Well, it's both. Uh, this is uh, an act that regulates uh, a very fast-moving area of science and healthcare. And the act has, since it came, has been, it's been a, it's met too many, ch a lot of challenges. In fact, in, it was challenged by the province of Quebec at some point, and many aspects of the act were declared to be unconstitutional and were then severed from the, from the act. What remains now is criminal legislation that bans a number of research and assisted reproductive activities. Uh, so things like cloning, a reproductive cloning, uh, things like uh, germline editing, so uh, you might have heard of CRISPR babies, uh, so it bans things like that. Uh, and the, the issue with the act, the principal issue is that these are areas that are very fast moving. And I think the best way to stay on top of something that moves, that's a moving target, is to have uh, regulations and a system of monitoring them that is also nimble and able to follow these developments uh, and address the harms that might arise from these developments. When you have a criminal ban in place, what you do is you basically shut the bait. That doesn't mean that these things don't happen. They, they might keep happening. And, and then so you're not able to look at them closely as they happen. You might actually end up not being able to uh, uh, monitor these areas and enforce the law because uh, you think it's not happening, but it's happening. Uh, it's better to have a system that actually is nimble and follows this development. Addresses these issues as they come mm -hmm. up. So what would you like to see from Health Canada? Would you support a movement towards a pay surrogacy model? Uh, I will support that. I, I think reproductive labor uh, is work. And I don't think women should be made to engage in work and not be paid. There's a tendency to view the things that women do in our society as not deserving of uh, pay or as not being work. And I think, you know, it should definitely be something that is paid work. Uh, but I, I think uh, that's going to require a lot. It's going to require a change in the law, and it's difficult to change law. Uh, at a minimum, what I'd like to see is for Health Canada to address some issues with the reimbursement regulations. So, for example, the regulations uh, say that uh, expenditures have to be approved essentially by a doctor. And there might be people, surrogates, who live in places where they don't have access to a doctor. Uh, and there might be some services, say, for example, babysitting uh, and maybe taking care of your dog that a doctor will not write you a note for. Uh, and those are left out of the regulations at this point in time. And I think they should be in there. So I think the regulations can be made more robust to at least address the reimbursement needs of surrogates and egg donors. Uh, and if that is done, that will be getting us halfway there. But I think a better system will be to say, let's treat this as work. It's not, it shouldn't, it, people can do it for free, but if they want to get paid, they should also get paid. And one last final thought, I suppose. Health Canada is looking for feedback on this. Who is it most important that we hear from? I think it's very important that we hear from surrogates and egg donors. I think there should be uh, consultation with these uh, two, two groups. Uh, and that's because uh, up until now, those voices have been missing from the debate. Uh, and I don't think you can make regulations that uh, are going to affect these two groups of, of people and not talk to them. I think it's absolutely crucial that Health Canada takes the time to consult specifically with surrogates and egg donors. Well, it's certainly an issue we will be watching. Thank you so much for your insight on this. Always a pleasure. That is Dr. Ubaku Abagu, Assistant Professor in the Faculties of Law and Pharmacy and Pharmaceutical Sciences at the University of Alberta.